Hello, I'm going to demonstrate running the escrow contract using Marlowe Runtime. This is one of the lessons in the Marlowe Starter Kit. The first three lessons looked at the zero coupon bond contract, and we showed three different ways to run that, either using Marlowe Runtime or not using Marlowe Runtime. Now we're going to take a look at a slightly more complicated contract, which is the escrow contract. So as before, we're going to start in um, Jupyter Lab. We have a notebook that we can work through. Oops, that's the wrong one. Um, the escrow contract, we're going to clear the outputs in the notebook just so we can start fresh. And this escrow contract is on Marlowe Playground. You can um, load the example and examine it there. But it basically has a buyer and a seller and a mediator. So the, um, the seller maybe might be buying a bicycle or something. So they're depositing the funds um, for the price of the bicycle. And then they have an option to say everything's OK or report a problem. So maybe the, the merchandise was damaged or the wrong color or something. So they make, make a choice here. If they say everything is all right, then um, the seller just gets their, their funds. But if they dispute, there's... Um, a bit of logic here to try to reach agreement and if they can't reach agreement a mediator steps in so here's the view in blockly the contract if you look at the marlow view in the, the playground uh, you can see that as a textual representation and essentially what we have here is um, multiple paths through the contract this always starts with um, the creation of the contract the buyer deposits the funds, and then they get the chance to report a problem, either yes or no. As I mentioned before, if they say everything is all right, the seller receives the purchase price. Um, and then the, um, the next step is the if there's a problem, then the seller might agree. And if the, the seller um, agrees that there's a problem, then the buyer just gets a refund. If they disagree, then the mediator has to make a decision. And um, depending on what they decide, either the seller gets the funds or the buyer gets the refund. So we've highlighted um, in gray this one path through the contract. And um, this is the one we're going to demonstrate here. But equally well, you could run through any of the other paths of the contract. So when you have a more complicated Marlowe contract than the zero coupon bond, which we saw before, there are often many execution paths through it. And so this is an example of that. And we're going to use the, um, the REST API for Marlowe Runtime. So um, we're going to have a node socket available, and then we're going to have the, the Marlowe Runtime web server. Um, we have three parties here, a um, lender, a borrower, and a mediator. So those three are going to be um, each funded addresses with their own keys. And as in the previous examples, we're going to set some environment variables so we can access things easily. These are just to save typing. We have a node socket. The network magic is one, which is the pre-production network. The web server is running locally. And here's the URL for the Marlowe runtime. And um, we'll check to make sure everyone has funds. So the seller has an address. We have a thousand ADA, which is plenty for this example. Um, we could go visit the uh, Cardano Scan Explorer and see the funds there, but we won't do that. The buyer has an address. They also have a thousand ADA. Um, they have a, uh, a mediator as an address. They also have their funds, and you could visit them on the Explorer. So now we have to design the contract. So this contract is one of the examples in the playground. So you could easily just go into the playground and um, create the contract. Um, we'll show you a little bit about what, what would be involved with that, but we're going to create it at the command line. So first of all, the selling price for the merchandise is going to be 75 ADA. And then um, we're going to have a 2 ADA um, deposit at the contract address. And we're going to need some need to do some time computations. So we have a few time constants there. 
Now, if you were designing this in Marlow Playground, you'd visit the playground, you'd uh, open the uh, escrow example, and um, you could you could look at the contract and even change it if you wanted. Um, but the key to downloading the contract is to say send a simulator. And then you get a form where you can fill in the parameters in the contract. So if you fill these in, then you can push download as JSON and um, you get the JSON file that we'll be working with in this tutorial. So um, in this tutorial, we'll create the contract at the command line. So here's the current time in machine readable and human readable format. And then this contract has several deadlines. Marlow contracts have timeouts um, for safety. So funds are always um, accounted for and can be withdrawn eventually at least. And this has four deadlines, the initial payment by the buyer, the deadline for them to complain, the seller um, may be asked whether they want to dispute, and then the mediator has a deadline for when they um, have to make their mediation decision. So um, the Marlow CLI tool has a template for the escrow contract. And here we're just filling things in. We give it the role name, seller and buyer, the price, and then these three deadlines. And we're storing the output in this file, escrow contract. And um, if you want to know more about these parameters, you can um, read the help system, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. So we can actually look at the contract. It's a JSON file, but we're going to convert it to YAML format when we view it, just because that's easier to um, to look at. And you can see things like the deposit, the different choices are sitting here in the file. So this maps exactly to what you would see in Marlow Playground. It's just a, a different format. And then, um, as I've mentioned in the previous lectures, it's really important to check the safety of a contract if you plan ever to run it on mainnet. And especially this contract, this is a little more complicated than the zero coupon bond, which really had one main path through it. Um, it had some other paths having to do with timeouts, but this contract has four very substantial paths. And so you're really going to want to, um, either in the playground and the simulator and or on a Cardano testnet like we're doing now, run the contract through each of the paths to make sure that the um, contract logic that is encoded there actually matches your intentions. Because you might have a very, um, uh, nice safe contract, but maybe it's not doing actually what you intended to do. Um, so you've got to check that. The, um, the first step is um, the mediator is going to create the contract and they're going to deposit the initial ADA. So we're using an HTTP post request to the contract's endpoint of Marlow Runtime. And so we're going to just bundle the body of the request here we're using Marlowe version one. Here's the contract. And um, we want the runtime to mint the NFTs for the three participants in the contract. So we give the participant names and their addresses on the network. There's the two ADA minimum, and we're not going to put any metadata or tags here. We could certainly do that, but um, for this example, we don't need to. And then if you look at the actual JSON, it's um, this big string of of uh, fields and uh, objects. Okay, so we can actually post this and um, I'm gonna just start that here and we can talk about it. So the mediator is the person who's creating the contract. We have the request and the response. And um, what we get back is a lot of bytes here. Um, the contract ID is important. This is the actual transaction that would need to be submitted. And the reason this is kind of big is that it is um, minting all the role tokens. So it has a Plutus script in it. And we can extract the, uh, the contract ID. So this contract ID will be used throughout the life of the contract to um, tell Marlow Runtime which contract we're operating on. And then out of that um, response body, we're going to extract um, just the transaction. We're, we're going to store it in this file, TX1 unsigned. And now we're faced with how do we sign and submit this transaction to a node?
And so here are five ways to do it. Um, you can use the Cardano CLI. Cardano Wallet actually has a command line and a REST service. Um, there's a hardware wallet version of Cardano CLI. If you have a SIP30 wallet that is Babbage compatible, um, you could sign and submit this in your web browser. And then um, what we're actually going to do here is use Marlow CLI, which has a, um, a convenience command for signing and submitting transactions. So um, here we give it the unsigned transaction, we give it the signing key, and we say we're going to wait um, for up to 600 seconds for a confirmation from the node. And unless nodes are like really, really congested, that's plenty of time. Okay, so that's confirmed. Um, in a minute, we'll take a look at it on one of the explorers. But in the meantime, um, you can see the contract address has two ADA, and it has the datum hash, um, the seller, the seller now has a role token. If you were to decode this hexadecimal, you would see it just has the word seller in it. Um, similarly, the buyer, with the role token, and um, they, uh, once again, if you decode this, it would say buyer. And then the mediator ran this transaction, so they've paid some fee to create these role tokens, and they've actually sent some data along with the role tokens. And um, so they're down a little bit, um, plus the two ADA they used to create the contract, they're down. So let's look at this on an explorer. We can see it's already on the explorer. And you can see this transaction where we have a thousand ADA going in. We have the three tokens that were minted that are coming out um, to the individual addresses. And then the contract, which is right here, has the two ADA. You can even inspect um, the datum if you'd like. and um, there's um, you know minting going on here, so here's the information about the tokens being minted. Um, so Marlow Runtime will mint the tokens for you. Um, there are a couple different ways you can do that in Runtime, but you don't have to have it mint the tokens. You can use ADA handle tokens or use pre-minted tokens. It's not required that Marlow Runtime actually mint them, but it certainly is convenient. Okay, and we can use Marlow Runtime to take a peek at the, um, the contract. So here we actually give it the contract ID as part of the request, and we'll just um, make that request. I'm not going to go through this in detail. This is basically the contract, some metadata, um, and um, that's it. So there's a lot of information here. So if you're building a Web 2 or a Web 3 application, all this information is at your fingertips. Now we're going to deposit funds. Um, and really, we just have to create the JSON request. Um, it's a little convenient to use Marlow CLI. It has an input command that um, can help you with things like deposits so you get the format of the JSON right. So we're going to do that. And um, we're just saying the, um, the buyer is depositing into the seller's account a 75 ADA. And so in YAML format, this is what that um, input looks like. Now we can bundle that input into a re request by supplying the Marlowe version. And then if we wanted metadata in the transaction, we could, um, we could do that. So um, this is what the request looks like. I should also say the tags are handy too. If you're building a Web 2 or Web 3 application, you can use the tags and there are special queries so that you can fetch information about contracts that are tagged the way, um, uh, you know, with the concerns you care about. So here, um, now we have the contract, you know, on the chain. So we're going to use the URL for the contract and we're going to post to the transactions endpoint. We're going to post this request and then the buyer is the one who's going to be doing the signing and gets the change. So here's the request. Um, as we did previously, we're going to pull out the um, actual transaction that needs to be signed, and we're going to use Marlow CLI to sign the transaction. So we need to wait a little bit for the confirmation. OK, there it is. Uh, we'll take a look at this in a second on the Explorer. But um, if you do the bookkeeping here, you're going to see that um, the 
buyer has about 75 ADA less. And now um, the contract is actually holding the ADA. So it has the original two ADA and it has the 75 ADA. So this is why it's an escrow contract. The contract is holding the escrow funds and it's only going to release them to the correct party at the correct time for the correct reason. So here we'll um, take a look. This is already in Explorer and um, you can see the transition in the contract. We have, um, it's going two ADA to two to 77 ADA. So it's, it's holding that extra ADA. The buyer has authorized the transaction with their roll token. Um, they also had a, a thousand ADA that they're using in the transaction. They get, um, you know, about 924 back. And um, that's, uh, they also get their, their token back. So that's kind of where things are right now. And once again, we can view this. Um, so this transaction tells us the inputs that occurred, the deposit we made, and then what's happened to the contract coming out of that. And you can look at the internal state of the contract and see that um, two ADA is held for the benefit of the mediator who created the contract and 75 ADA is held for the seller. And so if the contract were to close, at, you know, because of a timeout or something, these are the refunds that would occur. Now, um, the buyer needs to make a choice. They need to say re whether everything is okay or report a problem. So we have a, um, a choose construct here where you can create the JSON for choices. And this is um, what it looks like to report a problem. The buyer's making the problem or report According to the contract, the choice number is one to say this is a problem. So you could have like a menu of choices. Um, this contract's pretty simple, so you don't have a lot of choice here. And then um, we can bundle this in a request. It's exactly the same as before. And then um, do a post. And that was really fast. We got um, the transaction body here. We'll um, pull out the actual transaction that needs signing and we'll um, sign it and submit it to the node. There's the transaction ID. Um, this is what we'll visit in the Explorer. You can see that um, you know, the buyer, things are pretty much unchanged. They paid a little bit extra fee just to put that choice on the blockchain. Um, and the contract still has 77 ADA. So, um, there isn't really much to see here. Uh, we can click on it though. Okay, so here it is. And um, as I said, there's not a lot to see, um, you know, buyer token in, buyer token out, 77 ADA at the contract, in and out. Um, some fees were paid. The real thing that changed was the datum changed. So this, this datum had the state recorded prior to the choice. And this datum has the um, state recorded after the choice. So that's the only real um, alteration there. And we can actually see this um, if we query the contract, then um, we see our choice that we made, we see the remaining part of the contract, and then um, in the internal state of the contract, you can see that now there's a record that this choice has been made. And um, so that's one thing Marlowe's doing. It has this internal state of accounts, bound values, and choices that some transactions update. So now um, let's say that the seller does not agree with the buyer. They don't think there's a problem. And so we're gonna create input um, to represent that. And we're basically saying dispute problem. The choice number happens to be zero for that if you read the contract. And then the party making that is the seller. So we'll bundle this into our fourth request and um, you know the seller is doing the operation here. So they're in the change address header. Here's the transaction. We'll extract that and we'll submit it. In this case, they're signing things. There's the transaction. We can visit that in a minute. Um, not a lot of change here again. Um, all we're doing is updating the state. In fact, I might even just skip clicking on that because we kind of saw that before. Um, but if we scroll down here and look at the progress of the contract, 
the output state has gotten a little more complicated. It has the dispute by the um, seller and it has the previous report by the buyer in it. So this is changing the state of the contract and move, progressing it so that different um, logic takes place downstream. Now the mediator has to step in because the buyer and the seller don't agree. And um, in this case, they're going to rule uh, in favor of the seller. They're going to dismiss the claim. That's choice number zero. Um, bundle that up as a request, send it off to runtime. Um, pull out the transaction and then sign and submit it. And here the mediator is signing, but this process is very much the same as previous. So this is an example of a contract that is holding funds for quite a while, while um, different parties are making choices affecting the state of the contract. And then um, this final choice is actually going to end things. So we have the transaction there. Um, this is where we can see it in an explorer. And then the mediator, um, things really haven't changed much for them except that they um, they got back the original two ADA that they deposited and they've, they've paid a little bit of fee and, and stuff like that. And then now the contract is closed, but the, um, the funds just don't go to the seller directly. They go um, to Marlowe's roll payout address. So they're held there um, for the benefit of the seller, but they're not the seller's funds yet. And so you can see the 75 ADA there. And um, this, this datum actually um, encodes the fact that these funds belong to the seller. So let's take a look at this transaction. Okay, here it is. And um, so now we have a lot more going on. We have the 77 ADA that was there originally in the contract. And then um, nothing's paid to that contract address, but the role payout validator right here um, is the other contract. It's holding the 75 ADA. And um, you could actually even take a look at this, inspect it. Um, these bytes say that um, the holder of the roll token um, that's called seller is authorized to redeem this transaction. Okay, so we have that. The mediator is using their roll token to authorize the transaction, and they actually get back the two ADA that they originally deposited. And um, this is all visible. Um, if we query things and we can see there's the choice um, and there's no contract left because it closed. So now what happens? We've got these funds at the roll payout address. The seller wants to withdraw them. So there's a special request they create. It's very simple. They just tell it which contract they're talking about and that they are the seller. Um, posting to the withdrawals endpoint um, and noting that they will be um, signing and receiving the change creates the request. Quite a small request. We um, pull the transaction out and we're going to um, submit it here. Okay, there it is. Um, we can look at their address and we see that um, if you total this up, you see they have about 75 ADA extra because they received the proceeds. We'll click on this and take a look here. Uh, looks like we have to wait. And here's the transaction. And here we see the seller is using their roll token to authorize things. They get it back. Um, we're pulling the 75 ADA out of this address. And then when you, um, when all things are done, you can see um, that's been received at the, uh, the seller. So you can actually look at the seller's address and you can see they're almost um, exactly 75 ADA up above the uh, 1,000 ADA that they had originally. And then um, the other thing we can do is we can just look at this withdrawal transaction. Um, it just gives you some details on things. So that's the escrow contract using Marlowe Runtime and its REST API. Thank you.